Happy 2021. Uh, welcome back, Adventure Builders. Uh, I wanted to thank you guys for checking out the video. For the few of you that subscribe, I took a small hiatus just to work on some other projects, did my annual Reddit gifts adventure. I'll link that in the comments if you want a, a good look. It's a little emotional, so maybe a tear or two. Um, but I'm back. Uh, I have a whole slew of videos slated to release this year. Also, some great things for the people that support me on Patreon. Thank you so much. Uh, but without further ado, I wanted to kick off this year uh, with a really important video, and that is my top 10 rules for building adventures. So I'm gonna start from 10 and go all the way down. Each one I'm gonna pause and talk a little bit about why or the reasoning or the purpose behind that. Uh, and you can let me know if you think I have them in order of importance or if there's something I really left out or there's something that really isn't that important. I'm always happy to hear. Without further ado, number 10. Uh, number 10 is to overpay for your help. Um, this kind of tethers in with a couple other things I'm going to talk about. Uh, but the big thing is the people that you hire, um, even if it's a friend or family or an acquaintance, are a huge linchpin in this entire operation. And so the difference between them doing it for free or, you know, even you tipping a server or a host an extra 5, 10, 20 bucks can be the difference between an amazing experience. One of the recommendations I have is to carry cash with you when you're running these adventures. You never know when you're gonna need to bribe your way in and out of a situation or tip somebody to make the experience even better. I'll give you a couple examples. Um, one is just a host or a hostess at a restaurant. They are usually being paid minimum wage. Oftentimes they're not tipped because the servers are the ones that get tipped and they don't. And so you might need them to greet your player in this game, right? Maybe the whole thing revolves around them saying, ah, we've been expecting you. Uh, instead of the person walking up to this host or hostess and just being like, I think I'm supposed to be here. And then like, oh yeah, uh, treasure hunt, come this way, right? The difference is amazing. And so if you have to be like, hey, thank you so much. Here's a photo of the player. Uh, here's 20 bucks or here's even 10 bucks. Thank you so much. They'll be here in two minutes. Please look out for them. Oftentimes that extra money is the push that they need. And now we go to rule number nine. Great presentation is unforgettable. Now this is the difference between using white legal envelopes or you know brown cardboard envelopes with the names written on it. It's the difference between using Times Roman font or just working to find a better font. Uh, going to an arts and crafts store can really make all the difference and having a treasure chest with a little bit of you know the little accordion paper or something in it instead of just a key rattling around or a cryptex rattling around makes all the difference so don't hesitate as you're building this to find those little things that make it special you can go on Amazon and you can find a beautiful antique lock uh, for about the same price that you'd get a normal master lock at Home Depot and that just depends on if you have the time for shipping but shipping can be pretty quick. Uh, so really think about those different ways that you can make this thing present really well. There are websites like Canva and Snazzy Maps where you can take Google Maps and you can scrub all of the Burger Kings in between this street name and this street name so you can just have a nice clean map. Or Canva where you can take some things and put photos together and, and make it look really nice. So don't hesitate to go that little extra step for presentation because it looks really, really good. Rule number eight. Test risky gambits. And this just goes with playtesting in general. Uh, I strongly recommend if you are coming up with a riddle or a puzzle or building something yourself, test it 
out with people. It's so easy to find somebody who is unaware or somewhat aware and send them this puzzle and get their feedback on it. How do they feel about it? How did it make them feel? How long did it take them? So much of this day revolves around them keeping schedule that if you don't test something out, you might run into a huge issue the day of that you could have figured out before. Now there are some things that you probably don't need to test quite as hard. A cryptex is pretty bulletproof, right? There are five letters, you pull it apart. Uh, for the most part, you aren't gonna need to super test something like that. But if you are trying something out or you're worried about something, just give it a run through beforehand with somebody who wants to be a guinea pig. And that brings us to rule number seven. Double check everything the night before. I can't tell you how many times I've written face east and look through this when I really meant west and I caught it the night before or a, an Ottendorf cipher, book cipher, which you can see in one of my other videos, where I got two numbers switched around. So double check everything, especially before you seal the envelopes and make sure you have an envelope key. So you know that this envelope goes here and the contents send them to here. And while I'm at it, take photos of every single thing because worst case scenario, something gets lost something gets mixed up, something gets stolen, you at least have that ripcord where your player gets to the location where you dropped an envelope and they can't find it. At least you can still text them the contents of the envelope. Next up, we have rule number six. Mitigate risk. I cannot tell you how important this is, especially if it's your first adventure. I've done 75 adventures and I've consulted for about as many and I still always want to mitigate risk. I want to make sure that if I do take some type of risk, it's small and I have outs, right? I have a contingency plan. I have a plan for everything. And you don't want to leave it up to this big coin flip. I think back to adventures that I've done in the past, especially early on, where I got so, so lucky that the player was smart enough or just happened to go to the correct one of two. And then there's times where I haven't gotten lucky and I've learned these lessons. So really, really go through when you're trying to pull off something really complex that involves a lot of moving pieces, figure out A, is it worth it? Does that dopamine hit that your player gets, does that matter? Or can you give them the same feeling with something a lot less risky, which you might be able to. It's fun to get fancy. I do it all the time, but really, really make sure that there's a purpose to every single thing. And if you can shore up some risk in some way, absolutely do it because the day of you will thank yourself. Now we are on to number five. Plan and outline the day. This seems like a no-brainer, but I can't tell you how important it is. I use a bunch of Excel spreadsheets. <laughs> I sexy, I know. When I'm building an adventure, I have my adventure outline. I have one-sheeters that I give to specific players that have specific roles. I have a budget doc. I have a scratch notes doc. I have a separate doc where I have all the clues typed out so I can hand write them. But planning and outlining this day helps you make sure you stay laser focused. It also helps all of the people that are going to be assisting you so they can stay on top of things. Side note, for my Intrepid Adventurer patrons, uh, I'm going to have my scheduling doc that I use as well as the others available for you. So if you'd like a template, you can support me on Patreon and you can get that. Rule number four. No open flame. This sounds funny, and it is, but it's really serious. Uh, so many times when somebody wants to do a grand romantic gesture, proposal or anniversary or something like that, they look to the movies and the television shows where the woman walks in and the guy has a thousand votive candles lit in the house and he's ready to propose. And what I can tell you is going to happen is it's going to take you forever to light all the candles. It's going to cook the room. 
It'll be so hot. And now you have a thousand little fire hazards everywhere. If you don't put them in the little glass holsters, you can burn the carpet. I have singed carpets. It happened once. It'll never happen again. Oh my gosh. Just buy fake candles. They look amazing. They get the same effect. They are super easy to turn on and off and you don't risk cooking the room, burning the house down, or being super nervous about all these tiny little flickering candles when you're trying to propose to the love of your life or do something else romantic. Rule number three. Keep instructions clear. This is so wildly important because the difference between clear instructions and hazy or vague instructions can be the difference between your player making it to the surprise party at 6 p.m. or them still standing out in a field with a book full of numbers at 9 p.m. And this is going to tie into the next rule a little bit, so I'll keep it a little bit short, but I can give you a couple examples. I'm going to do a later video on the difference between riddles and puzzles, but in short, riddles are very vague and puzzles you can make very clear because you can have them say whatever you want. Maybe they open a cryptex and the puzzle is in figuring out this five letter word and then they open the cryptex and they have a full sheet on exactly what they need to do next and exactly where they need to go. As the player, it's a really bad feeling when you make a solve and you're still not quite sure what to do. And so it's really important to make sure that when they solve whatever they solve, when they figure it out, they know what to do. So they're not just like, uh, I guess we're gonna drive 15 minutes to this location that I think is the location. And now they have 15 minutes of awkwardness, hoping that it's correct, and then best case scenario, it is, and it's all fine, but worst case scenario, they've now driven 15 minutes to a, the wrong location because the instructions weren't clear. Really make sure to think about the initial instructions, setting those expectations. I always have two envelopes in the beginning. One is kind of the prologue of my book, where it's like, hey, welcome to an adventure, uh, or not even that, right? You'll need to find your presence today. Keep in mind, might be a little bit rainy in the afternoon. It's cold. You'll be walking one to two miles in total. You'll have a couple drinks, but someone else will be driving you. You know, you might get a little bit messy, so I've packed an extra thing of clothes, or you have this. You need to set these expectations, especially for a high risk one like a proposal or an anniversary or a birthday. I mean, could you imagine, you know, you send someone on a proposal adventure and they end up getting wet and you don't have a contingency or you don't have an extra change of clothes for them and now they're getting proposed to with a professional photographer and their outfit looks terrible. It's not worth it. So really, really, really make sure you've spelled out things more. I know your inkling is you wanna make it vague because you wanna make it mysterious, but it's not worth it. Make sure you set those expectations. Make sure instructions are clear. Number two. Make the adventure easier than you'd like. This kind of ties into the last one, like I said, with being very clear. But so many times I get people that are like, well, I don't wanna make it too easy for them. I, that's not fun. It's like, no, it is fun. Oftentimes people like a challenge, but they also like overcoming a challenge. And you've gotta keep in mind, they don't see this adventure coming. So you're gonna blindside him with an adventure and then you're gonna hit him over the head with puzzle after puzzle after puzzle that are too vague or there's not enough instructions or it's just too hard or you haven't play tested it. And it's not fun. You have to remember you are creating this because you're trying to create fun for someone. And if you make it too difficult, it's not fun. Whenever I have a client that hires me, I send them a survey about two pages long, has lots of fun questions, phobias, allergies, uh, you know, are they intrinsically or extrinsically motivated on a scale of the movie Hitch to the movie National Treasure with Nick Cage, how do you want your adventure? But one I always have is how challenging do you think it should be? And one is very simple. You're told to go somewhere and wait for further instructions. Someone comes up and says, here you go, and it's your next instructions and you go there versus 10, which is just like cripplingly difficult because you have to have that on a sliding scale. 
And I've only ever had one one client that put a 10 and then after our conversation insisted on a 10. Most people put an eight and then we drop it down to a six. And afterwards they're like, it was fun, should have been a seven or an eight. Because when it's too difficult, it slogs it down. You have trouble being able to keep track of like, well, it should take them 30 minutes to figure this thing out and then it takes them an hour and a half because you just made it too difficult. So err on the side of making things easier than you think. Worst case scenario, they breeze through the adventure and then when you do the next one, you can ramp up the difficulty. This also goes back to play testing. You'd be surprised uh, the things that you miss or the way that people work things out in their brains. Just because you come to this conclusion immediately does not mean that they will. So once again, make it easier than you'd prefer. Now, rule number one. Know your player. Most of the time, I'm assuming you're on here because you're doing something for a loved one that you know really well. But you need to really, really think about what they like and what they don't. Think of this like an exercise in extreme thoughtfulness. You are building a day for them. You are doing something for them. You need to make sure that, one, they even want something like this. I've turned down a couple clients when we've made it a little ways through, when we realize, like, I don't think they like this type of thing. You want this thing. They don't want this thing. Uh, I would love to get an adventure, have someone build an adventure for me, but I know plenty of people that would not. But this also goes in the same realm of challenge and difficulty. A great example I like to use is I, I had a client reach out for an anniversary present for his wife. And he said, you know, she loves museums and art, so you should do a museum heist themed treasure hunt. And then I, I got a hold of the friends and I talked to friends and they're like, oh, no, no, no. She wants brunches and she wants limos and she wants to relax and she wants to have fun with her friends. And it turns out like the guy that hired me wants something thrilling and adventuresome, but she wanted this. And so really, really write down the things that bring your player joy. What makes them happy? Do they love being challenged? Because maybe you can ramp up that challenge a little bit, but not too much. Would they prefer to just overcome a challenge? Because then everything seems like a challenge when you don't know what happens next. So that's the list. I hope that was helpful for you. Please keep these things in mind when you're building an adventure. Uh, for those of you that have built an adventure or are currently doing one, I would love to hear about it. So please reach out to me on Instagram. You can go to my subreddit, r slash constructed adventures and do a write up. I always guild those. Uh, or you can just call me and tell me about it. I'd love to hear about this. If you want to hire me to do something, I'm beginning to start to schedule out 2021 as soon as I get vaccinated and the pandemic's over. Um, or I'm always happy to consult. Uh, I have a couple consultation clients at any given time that are just working on something and they want a little bit more hands-on from me. Uh, but otherwise, until then, thank you so much and happy adventuring.